Hello, and welcome to part seven of the new tutor training videos from Learning Works' English Language and Literacy program. Part seven, the last part in our series, will cover setting boundaries and expectations. In this lesson, you'll gain an understanding of the importance of boundaries for a volunteer tutor program such as ours. You'll also learn about our expectations for tutors, which include filling out a monthly tutor report. We'll start by discussing the importance of setting boundaries with your student. Many tutor-student relationships, though they begin simply as transactional learning opportunities, evolve into something much more like a friendship or even mentorship. In fact, some of the people in our community who are familiar with our program will refer to our volunteer tutors as language mentors. So you'll not only be helping your student with the components of the English language, but much more likely helping them with understanding American culture and being an important presence for them in a potentially difficult or um, changing time in their life. However, especially with tutoring relationships that become more like friendships, boundaries are important so that the volunteer tutor and the student both are still getting what they want out of the program and feeling like they are able to continue. Take a moment to read why we believe it's necessary to set clear boundaries with your student. Another important note about boundaries is that the concept of boundaries in our program circles back to some of our earlier discussions in this presentation of critical thinking about cultural competence. Also, we acknowledge that because not all tutor pairs are the same, not all boundaries are the same either. So some of these rules, while good starting points or foundations for thinking about boundaries, they'll really come down to how you relate to your student, what your personal boundaries are in so far as the degree you would like to be involved in their lives. Um, but we do have some um, basic components of setting boundaries that we do feel are helpful for everybody. The beginning of your tutoring relationship is a great time to start setting boundaries formally. So for the first few lessons you have with your student, you'll be doing quite a lot. You'll not only be assessing their language skills and getting to know them, but you'll start establishing routines and setting boundaries and expectations. We help with that by offering a student contract that you'll go over with your student in your first session that clearly outlines the expectations of the tutor program. We like to remind students about these since it may have been a long time since they were first introduced to the program and put on the wait list. So hopefully the contract provides another chance for both the student and the tutor to fully understand uh, program boundaries and expectations. That said, what are the major and minor boundary issues that we'd like to um, just go ahead and outline here? And it should be known that in many, many years of the existence of this program, most of these have not occurred. And they are sort of a worst case scenario issue that we like to apprise tutors of, um, but they're very rare. These include from the top um, sexual harassment, which is obviously a detrimental component to the tutor-student relationship and should be immediately brought to the attention of any ELLP staff. Uh, requests to meet in the home. This is a little tricky because generally home visits on the part of the student or the tutor are liabilities and contrary to program guidelines. However, we know that in the course of the student-tutor relationship, you might end up going to the student's home for any number of reasons. However, repeated requests by the student for the tutor to meet in their home instead of any other learning place may start to blur the lines for the student as to what the role of the tutor is. A caseworker or other mental health professional is someone who might make home visits, but a tutor is not. It's just a different program. So it can be um, impeding of progress and of a um, proper and healthy uh, relationship growth. Intoxication is another major boundary issue that should be brought to our attention. Habitual lateness might be something that starts off as a minor issue and then progresses as to, into something that really can delay um, the momentum of learning. 
Inappropriate attachment might look different for different student-tutor pairs. Some students who do a lot of communication with the tutor, so lots of texts or phone calls, um, might be doing so within a perfectly normal confine of what I called earlier a language mentorship. So speak, helping someone speak English might result in them doing a lot of communication with you. However, if it starts to veer into something that feels inappropriate, unhealthy, or just, um, just too much for the comfort levels of the tutor, it can also be brought to our attention. And generally, any mental health symptoms that are exhibited um, by the student should be something that we are aware of. And we also list the tutor as someone who might exhibit any of these boundary issues as well, just because uh, both the tutor and the students are adults from the general public. So we just want to make our students feel safe in the program as well. Here are some other common smaller boundary issues. Tutors should determine on a case-by-case -case basis if they are comfortable doing any of the following things that might be asked of them or come up at some point in the tutor-student relationship. These include providing transportation, accepting or giving gifts, providing advice or guidance on any topic outside of the literal English language tutoring that you're providing, um, and being involved in any way, whether that's just being introduced to other members of the student's family, having a student bring their child or family member to a session. If these things are comfortable and feel like something you are able to or would like to do with your student, you may certainly do them, but it is okay to tell your student that that is not something you're comfortable with, that you cannot do it um, as their tutor. It is okay to say no and to only take on as much as feels right to you. A quick note about the importance of planning. The earlier part of this presentation um, this video series was about lesson planning and it comes back here in the idea that if you don't plan thoroughly for your lessons with your students, there will be a gap that is created both in time and in content. And that gap might feel really amorphous to a student. Who is this person that they meet with every week and what purpose do they serve? Without planning language activities and working on language goals, a student might become very unclear as to the nature of their relationship with their tutor, and that's another time when boundaries are um, in danger. A quick note, program expectations, which are similar and related to the boundaries of the tutor-student relationship, are more simply expressed as just the rules of tutoring. What will the student do what will the tutor do? What are the things each party can expect of the other? Here are the most common expectations of the tutoring program here at LearningWorks. And with each of these expectations, let's talk about some of the ways you might tell your student about them and set, yourself, set your student up for a successful participation in the program. Timeliness. As we discussed in our earlier video about cultural values, Americans value time and promptness, especially volunteers who are giving their time and their services to someone else. Explain to your student the meaning of the phrase on time. Go over words like running late or running behind. Tell your student that lateness in American society in general is something to be avoided and it's good practice to be on time and you know, talk about what exactly, what time that will be with your student. Communication is another one. Be clear about how you want to communicate with your student. Discuss what's the best way to reach you. Is it a text message, WhatsApp, email, a phone call? What to do if you're going to be late? That's another time where words like running late or can we reschedule, you know, and words like advance, tell me in advance, tell me before. Language is a part of all of these discussions of expectations and communication is certainly one of the most important ones. Engagement. Because we work with people who come from many different parts of the world and in places where there's this pretty steep power differential between students and teachers, uh, tutors need to be sure that they just are very clear with their student that it's okay if the student doesn't understand 
or is struggling, needs to ask a question, needs some information repeated, is having a hard time thinking, maybe because they're distracted with something else, it's okay to talk to your tutor about learning and encourage your student to ask questions, especially if they don't understand. Homework. If you are assigning any extra practice to your student, which some tutors do and others don't, most students, once they understand that the more practice they have with language, the better, do want some outside practice in between sessions. But once you've established that with your student, make sure that they complete any homework or independent study assignments prior to the tutoring session. Um, one way to explain it is that the more practice they have at home, uh, the better their tutoring sessions will be. Um, cancellations. Cancellations are a normal part of two adults trying to fit something extra in their lives with other obligations going on, um, but cancellations should be done in a manner that is convenient to the tutor and the student. So talk about how much time you need before a cancellation can occur. We encourage tutors to always check in the day before or the night before their session with their student just to see if the student has any doctor's appointments or unforeseen things that have come up since the last time the plan was made. Some of these expectations are learning opportunities for students who are still adapting to American culture or maybe Maine culture more specifically. So that means that if a student makes a mistake or is forgetful or is not yet quite clear on the expectation, it's not a moment to um, totally criticize or um, reprimand. It is a time for learning. Why did this happen? Why do we have an expectation? What can they do, what can they do the next time? Most students respond to the idea that whatever things that they establish and routines they establish with their tutor will most likely set them up for better success with any further education or jobs. Take a moment to read through these examples. One of a student tutor pair, Susan and Zara, in which boundaries surrounding time and communication were clearly explained, and the other involving Gerald and Jean, a situation in which boundaries were never touched on and the student did not really know what to expect or do. So take a moment to review these two hypothetical scenarios. Some of the most common challenges tutors face with regard to the boundaries and expectations of the tutoring program are here. The first is lateness. As we've discussed several times, Students from different cultures and countries have differing uh, approaches to timeliness and just understandings of time. So as discussed, there are ways to dis talk about this with your student to make them understand that a, um, in the American culture, lateness is actually a sign of disrespect and it's important to be on time. Um, lack of communication is another one, uh, frequent cancellations, and awkward requests for favors or needs outside of English tutoring. And that could be anything from asking a tutor to drive a family member to an appointment to asking for things that are completely outside the tutor's realm of knowledge, such as legal or healthcare advice. So our um, approach to this is that there's always a solution. Sometimes the solution is as easy as telling your student know that you can't do whatever the thing is that's being asked of them. Sometimes it's harder, sometimes it's a longer discussion, a more thorough breakdown of the reasons why a recurring challenge is happening and trying to figure out the best way for it to be remedied with the student. But in any of those cases, please don't hesitate to contact program staff and ask for help. It's why we are here. Although we just spent some time talking about what our expectations of students are, one of the most important expectations that we have for volunteer tutors is their ability to stay in touch with us regarding their students' progress and any highlights or challenges. And the way that we ask them to do that is through monthly reporting. The monthly reports are simply Google Forms that are linked to the monthly newsletter that tutors receive via email. So all you have to do is open your email, see the newsletter, find the link, click on it, and it'll take you to a short survey. 
the survey will ask for a brief overview of what you have been working on in your sessions. You are welcome to write as little or as much as you'd like. You can write a short um, one sentence summary or you may go into greater detail depending on how much you would like to share. But no matter how much you write, it's extremely important that you fill out this survey. Why is it important? Monthly reports help us stay in touch with our tutors, track student progress, and receive feedback on our program. Our tutoring program, um, usually every year, includes almost 100 tutors. And this number goes up and down, but in any case, it's involving of a lot of people that we don't actually see face-to-face, -face, who might not use our building for tutoring, and who might be making really important progress with their student, or perhaps experiencing some challenges with their student off-site. So in order for us to help them and help students, we need to know at least a little bit of what's going on. It's also a way for tutors to request support and resources from program staff. So like we said, there's never not a solution. If you're having an issue, a question, even an idea, some feedback you'd like to receive about any part of your tutoring relationship, the monthly report is something that we keep track of and read in detail so that we can get back to you with your um, specific request. It's also a way for us to share highlights of what goes on in tutoring sessions with our whole community. So that includes the staff of other Learning Works programs, the people on our board, um, our greater networks of past program participants and volunteers. A lot of magic happens in tutoring. These can be small moments of achievement or grand markers of progress, but if you can tell us what they are, we can share the importance of English tutoring and the important impact you're having as a volunteer on the entire social fabric of the greater Portland area. Here's what you'll do next. Now that you've concluded watching the videos, you'll attend your in-person orientation that you've already signed up for. You'll also, before the orientation, receive our student waitlist. So you'll have some time before the orientation to really take your time and read through all the biographies and goals and details of currently all our students who are waiting for a tutor. At the in-person orientation, you will let us know which students you would be interested in working with. You'll receive your student match. So that is something that ELLP staff will make um, given all that we know about the volunteers' preferences and schedule, as well as those of the student. You'll attend a final prep meeting with a program director to create a game plan for the student, discuss some sample goals, get some re references for some helpful materials. Then you'll take it into your own hands and start scheduling your sessions with your student. At the end of the first month that you have met with your student, even once, you can complete your first report in the reporting cycle for that month. So you'll receive an email with a link to the report and you can fill out the questions from there.